guys, welcome back to the Kid Science Corner. Today I've got another awesome digital electronics project for us to try. It's really similar to the internet radio station project that we did in the previous video, and if you haven't seen that, go check that out. And I saw all of your comments, thank you guys so much for your support, and I said in the previous video that I wanted to build on something with ChatGPT incorporating AI in my next project, and that's exactly what we're doing today. This is the circuit diagram of the TTS GPT, or the text-to-speech GPT. The entire purpose of this project is for me to type a question into the computer and then through the whole process, uh, the digital analog process that I explained last time, I'll get into that a little bit later, um, it sends it to the speaker and the speaker plays it out loud and the speaker plays the answer for everyone to hear. And this time, instead of playing a radio, it'll play um, the answer to my question, the specific question that I have, and I'll show you the entire process today. So here's the entire circuit diagram. As you can see, it follows a really similar structure with similar components. It just, there's just a bunch of like additional steps that I'll get to. Um, so obviously we have the battery and the ESP32, that stays the same. Um, and what we do is the ESP32, we type a question into the computer. And when I type a question into the computer, the ESP32 sends the question and the API key. And I know that sounds like a really fancy name, but it's actually something really simple. An API key, um, just make sure make sure that it's that it's you. Um, it's kind of like a secret, unique username and password. So so yeah. So uh, when we uh, type in the question, the ESP32 sends the question and the API key to ChatGPT, and this is where ChatGPT comes into play. Um, and obviously, you know, when you type a question into ChatGPT, it'll give you an answer. Um, and there's a whole process um, that, like, there's a whole, like, specific process, process, and I'll get to that. So after the ESP32 sends the question and the API key to ChatGPT, ChatGPT will send the answer in JSON. And it sends it in JSON um, in text. It's not exactly, it's not in speech yet. It, it's still it's still in text, but that's not what we want. That's not our final result. So it sends the answer back to the ESP32 in text uh, in JSON. And then the ESP32 sends that answer in text back to Google TTS. And Google TTS is Google Text to Speech. And it sends the answer to that. Um, and then Google, uh, Google Text to Speech takes the text and converts the text into digital audio, into an MP3 digital, um, uh, into MP3 file in digital signals. Um, and it takes, and it takes the, the text, like the, the question that we put in text, and it turns that into an actual like audio MP3. Um, and then Google TTS sends that answer as an MP3 in digital signals, still, think about that, in digital signals, back to the ESP32. And like I said, it sends it as an MP3 audio file, but in digital signals. We don't want it in digital signals. We want it in analog signals so that we can hear it when the speaker plays it. And that's this is where it kind of starts relating to the internet radio project that we did. So if you haven't seen that, definitely go check that out. Um, so the ESP32 gets the MP3 file in digital signals, and it sends it to the amplifier with all of the same connections. It's the same amplifier, um, and then the amplifier converts, amplifies the sound, obviously, and then converts it to analog signals also, and then sends it to the speaker, and the speaker uh, plays it out, and it plays the MP3 audio file in analog signals for everyone to hear, and it answers our question. All right, guys, so we just took a look at the circuit diagram, but let's dive deep into the actual code to see how this entire project worked and how it and how it's laid out. So I'm just going to briefly run through what this code is doing. Um, so in lines one through five, all it's doing is connecting to libraries um, and then lines seven through nine. It's just just uh, defining specific ports. And then, uh, obviously, we're kind of setting up Wi-Fi. We're giving it our Wi-Fi password and things like that. And then here is, I talked about the API key. This is where the API key goes in, this, in, the, in the part of the code. And then here in lines 26 through 33, all we're doing is we're just connecting to the Wi-Fi based off of the um, internet, that we, based off of the password that we gave it. Um, and then in lines 41, through 44, all we're doing is um, we're typing our question. So this is a specific part. Uh, this is the loop where we type our question. And then in line 51, um, it there's a function, or there's uh, there's ask chat GBT, um, and then it sends that specific question that we asked it, it sends it to chat GBT.
And then from line 51, I'll get to this, I'll explain this a little later um, in, in deep, in, uh, um, but it kind of, from line 51, it skips all the way to line 61. Like none of this really gets um, initialized and it, like it never really, it never really starts, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you all about that later. Um, so it skips from line 51 to 61. And then here it calls out the ask chat GPT function. And then um, after that, it sends the request in line 69. And then, um, like I talked about in the, in the circuit diagram, it skips to line 101 and it gets the response in JSON, um, like I talked about in JSON format, um, in digital signals, in text. Um, and then in line 119, it actually gives us the correct real answer, like in, um, in you know, in MP3, um, in analog signals, it gives like the, like the entire correct answer in one line, in one line 119, it gives us the entire correct answer. And then line 124 returns the answer. As you can see, it says return answer right here. And actually it's returning the answer all the way back to line 51 and this is the interesting part um so it sends it returns the answer all the way back to line 51 and line 51 onwards um specifically line 55 um is where it sends the answer to google text to speech and it creates our mp3 file and like i said it specifically happens in line 55 and also a really cool thing um in line 55 it says en and that's um that's in english but we can also change it to es or any other language um so en means english so it'll say our final answer in english but if we say es it'll say it in spanish any other language that you want we can try and test that out later um but yeah that's that's basically the entire code i'll also put this code in the description box so you can actually use this code if you're trying to attempt this project and a lot of this code was um asked uh, to create by chat gbt a lot of it was um like uh chat gbt helped me kind of make this entire code uh so let's let's actually check it out with the components that we have all right so so far we took a look at the circuit diagram and the code um so let's try and test this um project out in real time uh so this is the entire circuit laid out and as you can see nothing has changed um these components are the same the wiring is the same everything is actually the same from the internet radio project it's just the code that's changed a lot and i already i already went through that um but before we test this project out i want to kind of show you um how to get an api key and it's like you you just go to this uh, website uh, openai platform.openai.com and you uh, you click create a new secret key and um like i said it's kind of like a unique secret password or you know username um that kind of rec like identifies that it's actually you that's using it um but the important thing um is that you actually need credit card information for this so you might want to get your parents help on that if you're trying to uh, get an api key to start this project and now let's actually test out this project um so i'm gonna restart it over here and then see it's connecting to wi-fi and everything and it says ask your question i don't know if you can really see that but it says ask your question right there and i'm gonna click serial monitor right here actually it's already on serial monitor but okay um okay there we go now everything's clear and i'm gonna type my specific question let's start with a simple one i'm gonna do what is the capital and you can actually ask it any question will give you a different answer what is the capital of America. I'm going to do United States. All right. That's my question. That's what it's saying on the serial monitor. It's processing all this information. And as you can see, it actually shows up right here. The capital of the United States of America is Washington, D.C. There we go. And the capital of the United States of America is Washington, D.C. Now let's do um, another one. And I just want to do another one to make sure uh, to show you that it can answer multiple questions, giving different answers. So let's do what is the capital of India? All right, so what's the capital of India is my next question. 
That's my question being displayed on the serial monitor. And that's the answer in text. The capital of India is New Delhi. There we go. And I'm going to do one more question, and we're going to do a completely different topic. I'm going to say, what are the colors of the rainbow? All right. Entirely new topic. What are the colors of the rainbow? My question is being displayed. That's the answer in text. The colors of the rainbow are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. There we go. Those are the colors of the rainbow. All right, guys, so that was the TTS GPT Digital Electronics Project. I really hope you guys enjoyed this project. Um, I definitely enjoyed it, too, and I'll definitely be doing more content like this. I'm really enjoying it, and I hope you guys are, too. And I'm going to give you a little sneak peek, just like I did last time, on the next project that I'm going to try and do. It's also really similar to this, but just one more additional step. So what we did in this um, specific process was that we typed in the question and then it gave us the answer through the speaker. But the next um, step that I kind of want to do is I want to say my question out loud and then the speaker should say the answer. So instead of typing in my question, I want to say my question out loud and the speaker should be able to do all of this process plus maybe some additional steps and say my answer out loud. So it's kind of like my own personal Alexa or personal assistant, you know, wherever, wherever I want like an answer, wherever I want a question that, that needs to be answered. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.